Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and in today's brief video, I'm talking about pad swapping Bayer Dynamic headphones. Now, Wicked Cushions just came out with their Freeze Pad, which is known for a lot of other gaming products, not so much on the audiophile side, uh, but there's four styles here. You have black, uh, 90s black, uh, space, or geo gray, and uh, black camo. I'm gonna show you how it looks on the headset after. However, I do wanna talk about some basics. So, this fits a lot of ba Bayer Dynamic headphones. I have the Tiger 300R here which comes with velour pads. Pad swapping, one of the first things you should ask yourself, aside from comfort or style, um, for, you know, depending on how important that is to you, is how does a pad affect my sound quality? Pads make the most significant change to sound quality on a headset or headphone, because it's like you're changing the room around the speaker. You know, so if you have velour in this case, which is a very mid forward focused pad that has a much stronger mid range, and then you switch to something like a Wicked Cushion Freeze Pad, it's gonna have a significant impact on sound. Now in this video, I will do EQ, uh, I will share an EQ with you, I will measure the Tiger 300R stock, do a pad swap, show you how that affects the sound, and then provide my EQ, which is uh, multi-platform now, I have the ability to give you presets for Mac and Windows. So, with that being said, the Freeze Pads, they sell for $24.95 regardless of what color you get and I will have links in the description below to save you money. That'll get you 15% off whether you buy it through the website or on Amazon. Now, the stock pad does not weigh much. It is like paper light. So if I put the pad on this scale with the stock pads, I have a total weight of 298 grams. So I'm gonna weigh it with the new Freeze Pads but while I switch them, I wanna show you how easy it is. So on the Tiger 300R, it's literally just a stretchable pad. This is pretty normal for most um, products like this. And then you can see this has this leatherette ring. The stock pad, very similar design. This is actually a little bit more compliant. It's a little bit more flexible. And I think you get like, I don't know, a quarter of a millimeter. You like that? Mixing uh, fractions with uh, metric, it's probably driving people crazy. It just seems to be easier to switch out uh, the pad when you're going to the Wicked Cushion Freeze than back to stock because I get a little extra rubber. So that's all I had to do to stretch that over. I'm gonna switch this one out and I'm gonna show you two measurements. I'll show you just the pad weight difference. Am I going to the right pad here? Yes, okay. And then I'll show you what it does to the headphone itself. That was relatively quick. So I mentioned the weight being under 300 grams earlier. Now I'm going to zero out my scale here, put this back on and I have 376 grams. That is, or 378 now, because I bumped it. <laughs> so that's no joke. That's literally almost 75 grams, or that's a little over 75 grams, closer to 80, in fact, just on the pad swap. So just to, again, show you that, I'm gonna zero out the scale here. We'll put the stock pads on. They weigh only 28 grams. Now, if I switch to the freeze pads and put those on, why did that not zero out? That's weird. Put these back on. 98 grams, so the pads are heavier. Um, this is still not significant enough when you consider how light Bayer Dynamic headphones are because you're still under 400 grams. However, I do want to point out the weight change. Now, dimensionally, the freeze pads are almost the same as the stock pad, so measuring the opening here, I'm right about 57 millimeters, and if I go to the inner part of the pad because the, freeze, the stock pads on the Tiger 300 taper inward, so if I go to the smallest opening here, I'm just at 56 millimeters or so before I touch. I guess we're right about 57. So it's it's essentially identical. Now when I go to the pad thickness, they are again almost identical as well. Right when I touch up against the pad on both sides, here I'm getting 20 millimeters. If I go to the freeze pad here and compress it back down, right when I'm starting to touch, I'm at about 23 millimeters. You're gaining just a slight boost of thickness. And if you look at it from the top down view, you can see there is a little bit of a difference in thickness right there. That can be enough for some people because the Bayer pads, at least on the Tiger and, and similar ones with Velour, they're notoriously shallow. They have a padded center baffle on the pad because they expect your ear to press against it, which does cause some discomfort for some people. So this doesn't completely eliminate my ears touching the baffle. However, it's more like my ears are just kissing the driver baffle now as opposed to being compressed slightly. That is the most significant improvement I got on comfort, believe it or not. So. The lower pads, you don't really sweat, but they do get warm kind of quick, and then that's it. They just stay warm. I actually really like the lower pads. The freeze pads, because they have higher thermal mass, they take longer to heat up, but they also take longer to, to cool back down once you take them off because the gel holds a little bit of temperature. So I do like the sport fabric. It feels nicer on my skin than velour, which I didn't think would have been the case. 
but I just enjoy putting these on. It's like an instant gratification feel, but for the long-term comfort, my greatest gains on comfort wasn't so much on the heat, it was just relieving some of that pressure on my ear from not touching the driver baffle as hard. So now it's time to talk about the sound quality impact. And I mentioned this earlier, but this is based off going from a velour pad that came on my Tiger 300R and going to the Wicked Cushion Freeze. If your Bayer Dynamic headphone has a leatherette pad already, you will see a much smaller difference in sound quality. The For some people, the sound quality change may be imperceptible, um, but for others, you may wanna do some custom EQ. I can tell you that if you go from a velour pad to the freeze pad, you have a massive difference in bass. This, there's so much more bass and it sounds darker and more recessed in the mids because of the characteristics of velour versus the freeze pad. So taking a look at the measurement, this is what the stock Tiger 300R measures like on my rig, which is a great sounding headphone. I actually really like the Tiger 300R. When I put the Wicked Cushion freeze pad on, this is what it did to the sound profile. Very, very different. The neutral bass is basically gone. I have a scoop in the uh, upper mid range or the mid range area. And as a result, the headphone will sound darker and much heavier because all of that bass is being amplified. Some people just want more bass. And if that's the case, put this on. However, I don't think you get the same resolution and clarity because of the way this impacts the sound. So I made a custom EQ preset. Now, this is the green line that I am enabling now, takes the Wicked Cushion freeze pad, applies some custom EQ and gives you a new sound profile. So I take off the pink line. The green line represents my custom EQ versus the stock measurement with the stock pad. So now you can have the Wicked Cushion freeze pad in case you want the style differences or the comfort of the gel or just relieving that you know little extra uh, pressure on your ear and you can still benefit from the sound quality that you're paying for on a Bayer Dynamic headphone. So instead of walking you through how to EQ it, this part's changed. Um, basically, I'm providing a preset now that you can paste into Equalizer APO. That's just a text file, so I'm showing you that on the screen. Keep in mind, and this will be in the description below as well in case you just wanna import it, I'll have the file there. You can import your preset into Equalizer APO. On Sonar, if you're using Still Series Sonar, you can use this text file that I'm showing you on the screen to manually plug in the numbers and you still get the exact same sound. There's no difference if you're using Sonar versus Equalizer APO. The difference is with Equalizer APO, you can make it automatic. Now there's a new program I came across recently called EQ Max. So if you're using these on the Mac side, again, you can just use, click this little pencil icon and paste the custom EQ into here and hit apply and save that as a new preset. And in doing so, you now have, again, a fully tuned Bayer Dynamic headphone with the freeze pad. On this app, just a quick note, this is the premium version of the app. You can pay monthly or yearly or do a lifetime license of $40. If you're into high-end audio and you're using a Mac, this has been like a game changer for me because now I can make anything sound however I want and it works system-wide. That's a massive benefit. So anyway, enough about the software. That EQ helps. Hopefully you found this portion helpful to dial in the settings to your liking. Now, if you don't have the ability to use these apps I just mentioned for parametric EQ, let's say you're limited to a 10 band or a five band equalizer, their general sense is to reduce bass and do some minor tweaks to the treble. So starting at 250 Hertz, um, which is your mid bass or upper bass, you'd wanna reduce that the most, about seven decibels maybe eight. And again, I'm trying not to do it too aggressively because on a five or 10 band, it can impact other areas of your tune. If you go down to 120, 25 Hertz, reduce that by six decibels. At 64 Hertz, reduce that by five. And then at 31 Hertz, you can reduce it by anywhere from four to five. That's gonna drastically reduce that elevated bass that you got. Now shifting to the mids and upper mids, it's pretty simple. You only have to touch three spots. Basically boost your 1K by about three or four decibels reduce 2k by two or three decibels and increase your 4k by about three or four decibels i say three or four because none of this is an exact art there's not one exact frequency that it has to be for everyone's likings but i would target that range with that adjustment to get very close to the stock sound and then just make your own tweaks from there to see if you are missing anything to your own preference. So that about wraps up the video. I hope you found it helpful. I Just to keep it simple, if you cannot EQ, I like the sound of the stock pad more with Velour, just straight up out of the box. I don't like too much elevated bass, especially for the stuff I listen to and play. However, if you have the ability to EQ, I like the freeze pad more. 
And that's because just getting those three extra millimeters of pad thickness and reducing the pressure on my ear, that's the most enjoyable change for me on the headphone was the comfort improvement. It's not, I didn't notice it as much on a thermal standpoint because velour pads really aren't that bad. They both get warm at different rates and feel different on your ear. However, it's very soft. It's excellent for glasses and just relieving that little pressure means I can wear these for a much longer period of time. And after EQ, I can still enjoy that classic sound. So again, I hope you found the video helpful. And as I mentioned, I'll have links in the description below, not only to purchase these and to save you money, you'll get 15% off but to also find the software that I mentioned in the EQ preset to save you some time. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. I'd love to see the next video. That being said, I'll see you next time. Bye.